Well, first of all, let me uh, thank you, Chair, for, for providing an opportunity to be here. And especially, I wanted to thank Marek Kuczynski, whom we've been fighting for several years, and particularly strengthening the interparliamentary friendship uh, between the Baltic countries and Visegrad uh, countries in particular. And maybe I will build my intervention on how I see the positive dimensions in the cooperation and in the end, I will tell about the limitations. So the positive, obviously, we have the new formats introduced that are gaining momentum. The three Cs absolutely is one of those. Uh, we just hosted the Riga summit uh, last year. Bucharest is hosting the next one. And we see the US in coming months will finally join the uh, three Cs fund as well. That said, of course, so when it comes to interconnectivity, we see already the shortcomings that for years, overall in Europe have been ignored, connecting the north and south axis, be the train uh, connectivity. I mean, in, in the Baltic countries, in, in, in Latvia and Lithuania, we still have the Soviet uh, gauge system, uh, whereas there's nothing going um, vertically down to, to, to the rest of the Europe. And that is, you know, not only when it comes to trade mobility uh, for people, but it's uh, also military mobility as well. And this comes to uh, the, the uh, initiatives that has been launched within the NATO uh, and also within the EU, be it PESCO as well, that is inclined to, to foster the military mobility in particular. So therefore, obviously, the three Cs will gain momentum. And I look forward already to Bucharest summit. And um, I, I have got the inf information that they will organize the parliamentary forum because parliamentarians, we can speak more openly and frankly, but at <laughs> least we, we, we speak, you know, direct language and not going about. This said, um, yes, with Marek Kuczynski, actually, when he was serving as the chair of foreign affairs, for the first time we organized the Baltic and Visegrad countries chair of the foreign affairs meetings. Uh, and it was particularly created in informal uh, ways so we could exchange our views and positions and network. Uh, we had four meetings, but then at some point they stopped. And the point was the differences among certain countries in the, in the group. Uh, maybe not in the Baltic group, but in Visegrad group in particular. And this has caused a lot of reservations in past two years as such. And here I, I would say that uh, the main question is, is there a potential for the format of East and Central Europe parliamentary uh, assembly as such? I'll be very, very skeptical on that prospect. I will say why. If we look at the B3, V4 format at the parliamentary level, Baltic countries, Slovakia, Poland, Czech Republic, all have designated Russia as a state sponsor of terrorism. Yes, uh, all previously mentioned countries have condemned the Russia's aggression in Ukraine. And I'm talking about at the parliament level, the highest legislator in each of our countries. There's one country that hasn't done that, that is, that is missing out. I mean, uh, so I, I, I think, that, you know, in this format, the Central Eastern Europe cooperation, the elephant, in, in my view, is hungry. Unfortunately, as, as much as I wish to, you know, tell myself that it's other way around. But, I mean, in, in the Baltic countries, we see that the formats that include right now Hungary with its official position, um, we don't see a lot of cooperation in that area. Why, why I'm saying that? Precisely as mentioned examples of the statements. The statements at the highest legislative level that clearly states position not only of the politicians, but directly elected uh, individuals who represent the people altogether. And that is the lackmus test, I think, in any country. And it's, it's not only the Baltic countries and Visegrad countries. Across Europe, it's actually this question should be raised. Why national parliaments, all parliaments, 27 parliaments, haven't adopted yet um, 
a clear-cut position on Russia's aggression in Ukraine. Yes, a lot of have joined different joint statements, common positions. That is very convenient because you don't have to expose yourself and expose to things where maybe your true position is not that straightforward, where you have different strings attached, where you have dependencies. And, and this said, yes, the three C's is great. I mean, we have three ingredients. We have the energy security, we have infrastructure, and we have digital transformation. When it comes to energy security, I mean, it's, it's pity to see that the three C's countries cannot have, you know, a, a very clear stance, cutting off Russia's gas and oil. Impose very harsh sanctions. That will really capitate the Kremlin war machine. But no, there is no political will to do that. And, and, and sorry, I mean, I, I, I just, I can't stand a position as, as such. There is no winner in Ukraine war. No, there is Ukraine, and it has to be victorious, and we have to do utmost that it is victorious. Because then, you know, I don't want to go into a very grim scenario, what might be if Ukraine is not victorious. Or statements. We need to fight with the West. I mean, it was just said, against the West. What is this? We have to fight within the Union? For what? I mean, that, that is not, not the rhetoric that has to be when Europe needs to be united as ever, as ever before. And, and I think it, it, it's also wrong. Maybe it's interpretation, maybe. But you know, to use the wording that we need to take advantage of this or that format, you don't take advantage of the formats. Let's use for the common good the cooperation formats that we have. For common good, not for self-interest. And this, this is something where I see the shortcomings for these envisions, and I support, I wish that we could really bring together parliamentarism between the Eastern and Central Europe. That means Baltic countries and Europe. But we will not stop at that. I mean, yes, we do enforce right now the B3 plus Poland format. There's a lot of great potential. We are looking for ways of contributing to the Central Europe. If we talk about military, NATO, Latvia is planning to send its soldiers to newly created battle groups in Central Europe to show our solidarity. And then, you know, we do I deeply appreciate Visegrad countries' commitment to our regional security and defense. Absolutely, no doubt about that including Hungary with air policing. But then again, I do raise a question. Out of all V4 countries, three countries are present, troops on the ground in the Baltics. One is missing. And, you know, th this is something where I wish, I wish such, you know, internal divisions you know, cr created since 2015, migration, and etc. I, I mean, we have newly elected parliament in Latvia. It was elected in October, came together in November. And I have to say, I mean, before that, instantly, the first interparliamentary friendship groups that we created was actually Central Europe. Yes, we have three, but one is missing. And I... Really, I, I honestly, I don't see that anyone will take that initiative. And, th and this, is, this is something, sorry, I mean, I, my apologies if I've been too harsh. But there are certain things that need to be addressed. I mean, it's, it, it, I, I do appreciate that you're taking care of many, many Ukrainian refugees. Who's not doing that? Tell me, who is not doing that in Europe? That is a, you know, a logical thing to do. I, I wouldn't even, you know, re register in my mind to question, should we actually host Ukrainian refugees? It's just, it's a necessity. We have to do that. And, and you know, I mean, humanitarian aid, obviously, we do supply. But then I understand also the reasons not to send 
lethal weapons, fine. But to block your country as a transit, to shorten the time or speed up the weapon delivery, those countries that are ready to supply weapons. Sorry, there are hundred, hundreds of Ukrainian lives at stake for such a policies. And it's not, it's not acceptable. At least in Latvia, it's a, it's a grim situation. But it's something where we understand right now. I mean, in Latvia right now, is, everything is black and white when it comes to Russia's aggression in Ukraine. There is no gray area whatsoever. There is zero tolerance to war propaganda. And I think that should be across the Europe, across the board. I mean, we, 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 we saw the, the, uh, what happened at the OEC Parliamentary Assembly. You know the reason why? I spoke what I did. It wasn't prepared speech that I made in Vienna. It was because when the session started, the panelists, you know, the officials of the OEC Parliamentary Assembly, rapporteurs, were delivering on certain issues. And they were saying, yes, it's, it's really, really a grim situation where eight OEC workers are detained and will be Marshaled, court marshaled in Lugansk. Like, it's a pity. And in the room, you have Russians who arrested them, who imprisoned them. And then you have, you know, saying, like, it's, yeah, it's nothing we can do about it. And, and my reason why I intervened was that suddenly what I heard was business as usual. You know, the talk was business as usual. We have winter session, let's talk. Let's have the tick in the box, and let's meet in Vancouver in summer. No, it cannot continue that, that way. So in parliamentary dimension, where I see before the parliamentary assembly between Eastern and Central Europe is being created, let's have this unity in regional institutions. Council of Europe, we managed to do that. 2019, we set up the Baltic Plus Group. What they did, they, they worked really shoulder to shoulder for internal procedures to find a way to expel Russian delegation. So when they were that close to do that, we all know what Russia did. Russia said, oh, this is organization is not for us, we are leaving. But obviously they knew that their certain part is on fire and they will be kicked out. So right now at the OEC parliamentary assembly is the same thing. And this is where we need Hungarians as well on board. Look, I, I was really thrilled to, to, to hear your delegate who's speaking totally, totally different than your prime minister. And it's just, you know, what, what, what is the messaging? And if, and if we can show that we are united in these international formats, then we can go ahead and build lasting cooperation to parliamentary assemblies as Mr. Terlecki suggested. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.